Yo, what is up? This is Joshua Casper. Welcome to another Ableton Live video tutorial. This one's pretty dope, guys. Um, I was watching Mr. Bill's tunes. Uh, my friend Mr. Bill has a YouTube channel. The link will be below. I suggest you go check it out. He has a couple of different just series of tutorials where he makes an entire track and lets you follow along. And he makes some really dope tracks, so I suggest you go check them out. However, if um, I found a hidden gem in there, something that I didn't know about, and uh, he makes this little rack inside his tutorial to fatten up his sound to make it wider. And what I've done is I've recreated it inside of Ableton here with all uh, Ableton native devices. And I'm going to go ahead and throw this up online so you can go ahead and download it. But I'm also going to walk you through uh, how to do it yourself, obviously. Uh, he does it in his tutorial. Again, link below. Um, but just in case you didn't want to go through, because all his tutorials are pretty long, uh, I just decided to make a tutorial dedicated just to this device because I think it's so useful and so dope. So big ups, Mr. Bill. Keep doing what you're doing. And uh, we'll keep watching your videos and buying those tracks. Anyway, I made the device. It's called Mr. Bill Widener because it widens up the sound. I've got it off right now, and I've just got this bass loop um, from Ghetto Funk. And i got a release coming up on Ghetto Funk. Shameless plugs. Where's Chuck Norris? Anyway, so let's go ahead and listen without the, uh, the rack. That's a pretty fat bass line, but watch what happens when I turn this bad boy on. Listen how fat it is now. It's pretty fat now, right? So uh, let me go ahead and save this. Mr. Bill Widener, bam, right there for you. I'm going to go ahead and throw that up online, obviously, but let's go ahead and make it, okay? Um, first thing we're going to do is come in here and get an audio effects rack. Drop it on there. I'm going to open up the chain view, and I'm going to come down here to utility, and I'm going to put two utilities on, top and the bottom. And if you want, you can rename these. I'm going to rename this one mid, and I'm going to rename this one side. And this is just like the mid side that I showed you before with the EQ8, where you can um, affect and e EQ the side audio, the audio on the left and the right, and then the audio in the middle. You can do that differently on the EQ8. And we could use an EQ8 in here, but uh, I just this is the way he did it, and I think it sounded really dope, so I figured I'd do it too. So first thing, we're going to come into mid, and right here on the utility, it's got the width down here. We're going to pull that down to zero. And then on the side, we're going to pull that up to 200. So now if I solo this, we'll hear just the, uh, the middle audio here. And if I solo down here, we'll hear just the audio on the sides. So obviously that subby part is in the middle. That's where it's supposed to be, and that's cool. Now, this boosts the audio because we've kind of duplicated a bunch of noise in here, a bunch of sound. So the next step, what I would do is throw a limiter on the end of this and just keep it at zero just to make sure we're not going to be redlining or anything. Um, and we could rename this audio effects rack. We could say mid side selector. Boom. Okay, so that's done. And we can minimize, we can minimize. And the next thing I'm going to do it's what he did is put on a filter delay and what he's going to do here is you're going to turn off the filter on the top you're going to turn off the left right we just want concerned with the left and right not the middle section here uh, he just left all these parameters the same as the default which is cool but he turned this to time and this to time and he turned this one down to one millisecond and this up to 10 milliseconds so if we listen without it, and then I'm going to turn it on and off and see what we can hear. It's just going to add a little bit of delay between the left and the right to make it sound fatter. Um, before I do that, I'm going to go ahead and turn on the limiter just because it boosts the sound just like uh, this one did. So let's listen. <laughs> So 
can hear how that, that just alone, that filter delay, makes the sound just super fat. And then if we add it to the limiter that we have, I mean, not the limiter, the mid-side selector channel, then it just makes it super duper fat. And it still keeps, the fact that this is after the filter delay, it still keeps that middle channel uh, with the sub in the middle where it needs to be to make it sound nice. So let's go ahead and listen with everything together. So what we've done is just made this way more dynamic than it was. It was already a dope loop, but now it's just super fat and super, it just sounds super nice. So uh, if I wanted to rename this filter delay, uh, and we just named it uh, Stereo Widener. I don't know how to spell widener, but that looks pretty dope. And uh, then what, the next thing we wanted to do, if um, I wanted to save all of these, I would just hold down shift, so, well, I'd select the limiter, hold down shift, select them all, right click, and go to group. And now I've got this effects rack all right here, inside of here. And if you wanted to, you could you could change, add some macro knobs, but I'm not gonna do anything like that, because I, I think for the purpose of this tutorial, just making that super dope and super wide was uh, the best thing to do, or is the best thing to do. So like I said, I'm going to go ahead and throw this rack up online, but obviously I think you should follow along and get it down. And one more time, big ups to Mr. Bill for uh, sharing that knowledge. Anyway, keep rocking, and I'll see you next time. Peace.